tonight on CTV, the Meow Wolf art installation has opened in Denver. And see what went down when the Rams took on the Hawkeyes. Also see how the ASCSU Senate is working on inclusivity and what to expect for homecoming weekend. All that and more on CTV starting right now. Good evening, Rams. I'm Robbie Patla. And I'm Ren Wadsworth. Thank you for joining us tonight. The Associated Students of CSU are required to attend the Pride Resource Center training to be more inclusive. There's a long history of, and long line of instances that we can cite right now that show non-responsiveness to a lot of the issues that, are, that students and other community members are facing on campus right now. Following the last few weeks of hate speech on campus, members of the Pride and Resource Center met with the ASCSU Senate to pitch demands that would lead to more inclusivity, outreach, and resources for those of the LGBTQIA and BIPOC communities. The trainings and new amendments put in place are all geared toward making all students feel safe on campus. Governor Jared Polis announced the return of the at-home COVID test in Colorado at the press conference on September 21st. The program is being reintroduced to the state in an attempt to keep Colorado's numbers down, especially in areas like Larimer County where COVID cases remain high. The state was given over 2 million Binax Now rapid tests, which will be dispersed to individuals in eight separate tests. Polls continued that anyone interested in receiving them can sign up at covid19.colorado.gov slash covid19 at home tests. A handful of Fort Collins larger employers wait for clarification from the federal government regarding the Biden administration's vaccine mandate. Last week, the administration announced that it would require all private companies with more than 100 employees to require vaccinations or weekly testings. According to the Coloradoan, companies that fail to require vaccines or weekly testing may be charged $14,000 per violation. According to the Fort Collins Chamber of Commerce, the city has around 120 employers that fit this demographic. COVID-19 has affected the city of Fort Collins in many ways. Natalie Devereaux has more on the story. Natalie? Thanks, Robbie. As a CSU student, most of us are familiar with transport and have likely rode the bus at least once or seen them driving around. However, consequences of the nationwide employee shortages have now hit public transit industries in Fort Collins, and you may have noticed fewer buses on the road. This is because there are simply not enough bus drivers to sustain all routes. Two circuits have already been pulled from action, while others have reduced hours. Usually the transport fleet is packed with riders, but since the pandemic, ridership is down 49%. They have also seen a major decline in employees because driving is seen as a high-risk job due to the exposure to so many people. The number of applicants that we get uh, went from several a week to zero. The shortage of drivers has put enormous strain on the 91 current employees who now have to work longer hours and often overtime. They're very tired. It has an effect on morale for sure. In an attempt to ease the stress, Transport pulled two of its least traveled routes, 11 and 12, which each had less than 80 passengers per day, and now offer an on-call taxi service to fill in the gaps but they are determined to preserve the routes that run out of CSU because students make up the majority of their ridership. Like help connect, like bridge being on campus and then also going into the larger Fort Collins community. Many students rely on transport to travel around the city, which is an easy way for them to connect with the community. The sustainability is also about having community and supporting those around you. Transport's main goal is to serve Fort Collins residents and they are trying to return to normal operations as soon as possible. And I think people caring for each other, caring for their community is how we get out the other side of this pandemic. Safety measures have also been implemented like requiring masks and Transport has zero cases of drivers contracting COVID while at work. As things, things slowly begin returning to normal, Transport is seeing signs of just that, with eight driver applications coming in last week. They hope to keep this trend going, and the agency urges anyone interested in working for them to apply at fcgov.com forward slash jobs. Back to you, Robbie. Thank you, Natalie. Quick heads up for all students and staff who spend a lot of time on the south side of campus. Tomorrow, September 29th, the path through Heritage Arboretum will be closed from 6 in the morning to 6 in the evening. 
The sidewalk in between West Pitkin and Lake Street will be closed so new bike path stripping can be added. Arrows on either side of this pathway will indicate detour routes for anyone who intends to use them. If anyone has any questions, they are welcome to contact Facilities, Man facilities Project Manager Zachary Colbeck at 970-310-1223. More on campus construction, we have an update on the Lori Student Center roundabout and whether we can expect it to stick around for a little longer. Construction vehicles were seen making adjustments for the new pathway. However, both students helping instigate traffic solutions and the Alternative Transportation Fee Advisory Board believe that the work being done is for aesthetic and safety reasons, rather than making the new installation a permanent piece of campus. Fence panels have been added to the roundabout in an attempt to separate pedestrians from cyclists. We will keep you updated about the Lori Student Center walkway as well as the other two proposed roundabouts on Colorado State University's campus. Don't go anywhere, Rams, because Michelle Ellis is coming up next to give you your weekly weather report. Welcome back from the break, Rams. Colorado State University chemists have been given a $3 million grant to fight plastic pollution by changing the way we view recycling. Over 10% of the United States Department of Energy's budget to fight plastic pollution has been granted to CSU's Polymer Upcycling Research Team. One branch of the study is graduate students like Mariel Price. So about 600 million metric tons of plastic waste gets produced every year. And that plastic waste, by and large, winds up accumulating in landfills. The group led by Colorado State University professor Eugene Chen and in collaboration with researchers at MIT and Northwestern University plan to reduce and reuse discarded plastics using circular polymers. Mostly we've been working on the development of more sustainable methods for making polymers, but we've also recently started these projects developing chemically recycled polymers. Really, the main overarching goal is to help prevent the accumulation of plastic waste in landfills and in the environment and to reuse that plastic resource over and over again without it going to waste. Price and her team are aiming to develop polymers that can be reverted back to their original components, allowing plastic to be used repeatedly throughout its lifetime. This would be a drastic change in the way plastic is used and recycled in the future. Ideally, you're making material once, using it, recycling it, and then being able to continuously remake and reuse it over and over again, infinitely. The research surrounding polymer upcycling has just begun, but as they work, the team strives to make the world a little more sustainable. The research project is set to take three years under the Department of Energy's supervision, but as new innovations and discoveries come to light with the study, we will keep you updated here at CTV. It's already almost October, and that means the CSU Homecoming and Family Weekend is upon us. This four-day event from October 6th through the 9th will include many events for all students, staff, their families, and alumni to enjoy. The events will kick off on the Wednesday with a CSU Trivia Night at alumni-owned Ryan Sports Grill. From there, festivities for the week include the Distinguished Alumni Awards, the 5K Homecoming Race, and Friday Night Lights, where many can gather on the west lawn of the LSC to enjoy a bonfire, fireworks, and the lighting of the A. More events will take place throughout the week that all lead up to the homecoming football game against San Jose State. This year's homecoming weekend is sure to be loads of fun for Rams and their families. I am super excited to see the Rams show their spirit once again. I am personally most excited for, however, to see the A lit up because it has been a while since we saw that. What about you, Ren? Like you said earlier, I'm excited to see Rams out and about and showing their school spirit, but I'm just hoping it doesn't get a little too wild like it can at those homecoming games. Yeah, do that. And speaking of wild, Fort Collins wildlife rehabilitators rescued an injured goose from a mobile home park. Northern Colorado Wildlife Center responded to a call from a park resident who had seen the loose goose. When the response team arrived, the bird walked directly up to the group. Shortly after, the rehabilitators discovered the animal's wings had been clipped and it was being kept as a pet inside one of the mobile homes. No information has been released about the owner of the house, but the goose was later transported to Greenwood Wildlife Rehabilitation Center where it will undergo treatment. There are an assortment of clubs around CSU for all Rams to take part in. However, this one may pique interest for those who love to travel. Junior Sydney Walsh introduces the Vicarious Travel Club. 
This is a club that will provide students with a great opportunity to learn about how to budget and how to um, travel safely, what to do if you're in uncertain circumstances and who to go to when you're abroad and um, culture barriers, language barriers, stuff like that. Through slideshows, personal stories, and other outlets, students will share travel experiences and collaborate together to create effective guides and plans they can use anytime they decide to travel, whether it be domestically or internationally. Who doesn't love traveling? If you love traveling, this is a perfect club for you. If you want to learn more about how to travel, what to do while traveling, great places to see, this is the club for you. You should join this club. Students interested in joining the Vicarious Travel Club can do so by either visiting Ramblink or emailing Walsh at sawalsh at colostate.edu. If you are looking for something out of this world, a new art installation just opened in Denver called Meow Wolf. Meow Wolf is an interactive art exhibition that tells a story that participants must piece together as they navigate the maze of displays. Meow Wolf has two other locations in New Mexico and Las Vegas, but every installation is unique to the location. The Denver shop is called Convergence Station and highlights things like interdimensional travel and galactic harmony. The four-story art museum features the work of over 100 groups and individuals from Colorado and even showcases 20 Fort Collins artists. This includes CSU professor Cyan Tornatsky, whose film Where I Am When I'm Not With You is on display along with other creative films on loop in their in-house theater. Convergence Station in Denver is certainly a unique experience, but you don't have to rush to see it yourself because this Denver art show is on permanent display. Colorado State University launched a new effort to boost their already impressive 70% graduation rate by investing $11 million to close equity gaps. This building on progress that CSU has made over the last decade to continue to close gaps across socioeconomic status, race, gender, and other demographics. CSU's System Chief Academic Officer Rick Miranda said, quote, We cannot achieve our overall student success goals without closing equity gaps, end quote. CSU plans to spread these efforts across all domains, including the Pueblo and Global Campus, each with their own separate goals to help reach the overall goal. What is the overall goal, you ask? Well, according to Source CSU, the plan is to eliminate equity gaps for all demographics by 2027 and raise student success within that same period. Don't go anywhere, Rams, because Brandon Cruz is up next to give you the inside scoop on a sports team here on campus you may not have heard of yet. Stick around.